Shug Dog, Big Shug Dog. We want motherfucking Jake Paul for a million bucks. Boxing, MMA, or wrestling, or jujitsu, whatever. Or spitting the furthest. A million bucks to the winner. Let's go. My band 50 and I, only person that smoked them out was Gordon Ryan. You know what I mean? I'm just keeping it real. This is the next big thing right here. <laughs> What's wrong, dog? Uh, uh, he having flashbacks. Gotta bring up bags. old shit. We gotta bring up old shit. He acting like Gordon on top of him right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, that's what the shit felt like. Dude, <laughs> he smoked on you for real, dog. He smoked fucking Shucky's ass out. Oh, god damn. He made you. <laughs> he made. He made you tap out. Like <laughs> he was like. He was He's like. He was, he, was, he was about to tap you out, and he was like. <laughs> Going to check out the box. Nobody lives here. First Andrew lived here, and then he moved out. Then Jordan lived there, and now it's vacant. So let's check it out. The legendary box. <laughs> kind of nervous opening this thing. <laughs> right? See, Jordan cleaned it up nicely before he left. Here it is. That looks awesome. <laughs> Here's the former residence of C.J. Murdoch. Let's see if we can get in here. here nobody's in there. Oh, C.J. Left it nice and clean. He's getting his security deposit back. <laughs> kind of weird, right? Everybody's gone. I think George lived in this, then Wayne lived in this, and then Ted lived in this. Locked up, but as you can see inside, Tad had this thing all set up before he's moved out. Yeah, it's kind of weird coming here now. Hey, it goes down compared to before. He found the place that I'm living in currently right now. So, I mean, he knows Mount Vernon, he knows all the people. He's extremely good at logistics and networking. I mean, he, he got everybody moved and situated within a week, it, it almost felt like. We went from, fuck, where are we gonna put all these people to everyone was good, so. It wasn't easy, but you know, Heath works around the clock to make shit happen, so. The mix of people, that were like in limbo that had just got here, a mix of people that were living in their vans, a mix of people that were living in their cars, in shacks, and on the mass. So it was about 20 to 25 people. Jesse bought an old church. It's uh, you know, kind of a, a rougher part of town here. Jesse's trying to clean it up, but he's uh, redoing the whole thing, and then he's gonna make a bunkhouse later and uh, you know, kind of open up a spot for people to move in so they can train at the gym full time. So. Jess has been a big help in, uh, uh, you know, uh, giving housing for the people that didn't have anywhere to go. We're headed to Jesse's Gypsy Village. That's what we call it. We're just kind of trying to add more of these things, you know. The more people that come, we just need places for them to crash. And so we just kind of keep trying to get all these spots. This is definitely a gypsy caravan for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Look, Michael. <laughs> uh, this is just old shit, like busted up toilets and stuff. Sometimes I use them for a part. If I get a toilet that's like missing a piece, it's kind of like a toilet graveyard. But... It's out there. Neil. He's probably dead. Neil. Neil. This is gonna be Flo's first body. This is the scariest of all the caravans. Shit, what up Flo? Welcome to my crib. Pod life. Room tour. Ain't nothing crazy. Got a little TV, got my AC. You know, that's a high life right here. I got my Xbox and I hooked up. I got this heater. I got this AC. I got this full ass bed. Look at that flow. Come on, bro, that's all I need. Shit, yeah, um, I came here like a month ago. Yeah, and then Jesse was cool enough to just like uh, let me stay in here. I was staying in the fighter house originally, but it was a little cramped, so I traded it up for this box. You don't think this is cramped a little? Hell no, nah, this is perfect. This is all I need right here.
bunk bed. Yeah, we got the house, we got the basement, we got the penthouse, we got the pod out back, we got the bunkhouse out back, and I think people live in vans in the parking lot too. But yeah, there's a lot of people. So when, when, when Jesse bought this, it was the crack house. Jess fixed it all up, moved the boys in, and obviously made it a nice house. So that's kind of what's going on now. A bunch of people are just trying to get houses, put everything they can into them. We just arrived at the newest of all the fighter houses that we purchased. Beds are included. Since we got the letter, four or five different people have bought houses. So I think this is like the, the fourth one. Getting some work done. <laughs> so much purple. There's so much purple in this room. Literally, like that whole shit. The window's still purple. Yeah, it's wild. Dude, I hate the color purple. You know, it, it, it had to be a team effort here. You know, we got. Uh, one fighter house and you know three or four guys over there a new fighter house time pixie over there so it's just like a really big team effort you know for everybody that's throwing in so i'm really proud of all the the, the guys and the team for you know pitching in and being a part of that Switch, 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 switch. Get on it, get on it, get on it, get on it. Use it, use it up, use it to get out. We gotta move now, Kyle, just gotta move. buddy, we gotta go. 30 seconds, it don't matter now, Kyle, just go crazy, man, we gotta get out. The toughest part about losing for me is not the loss necessarily, it's having to, uh, it's having to look at everybody after I lose that uh, told me and believed in me because I know it's not this way and I know it's, it's not how things work but I just feel like I let everybody down so you know I competed against Gordon last week that was a big build up for me and then I had to try to re-up it for the trials. I was struggling to find my groove so. Nobody knows this, we didn't want to make excuses but in the match with Gordon Jacob separated his AC joint and his ribs got destroyed and he had to take cortisone shots and uh, he had to do a bunch of stuff that, that made it able for him to show up the next week. That's the only opportunity to get into ADCC. So he showed up and he lost to a guy who was relatively unheard of. You know, it's a tough weekend, it's a tough loss, but if, if you want to be a champion, you got to be able to shake those kind of things and get through that kind of adversity. That's what being a champion is about. I didn't do that today, and I, I also believe that's part of being a champion is coming back from those kind of things, so that's what I'm looking forward to doing. We're at the Star, Frisco, Dallas. Gordon Ryan versus Felipe Pena. We're on the main card. Jacob Couch versus Jacob Rodriguez. It's gonna be an incredible match, man. J-Rod's amazing competitor, pushes the pace the whole time. Couch always looking for a submission, so uh, I think it has match of the night potential all over it. J-Rod actually submitted, I believe, everyone in his division. J-Rod punched his ticket to the ADCC, so obviously a win over the trials champion would be huge for Couch. You get into this submission, he rolls out, back to it, laser focused. Not for one second, for one second we can't. Relax. No, Relax can't lose focus. focus. It's got to be focused, constantly.
Isolated here, Jacob, isolated. Okay, good attempt, Jacob, good attempt. Let's make it count, make it count. It's open. Good, just keep looking for submission attempts, Jacob. Stay tight. Good isolation on the arm, Jacob. Tight. Stay tight. Use the hips. Use the hips. Hips out. Stay tight. Hips out. Make it count. Hey, now stay. Stay, stay. Hey, this is big. Make it count. Relax. Well, I'm walking. We make serious mission here. He had full extension on that arm right here. Close, close. This is deep water for J Rod. Good pressure. Stay focused. Well, he's certainly employing a tactic we saw in one of his most recent matches at WNO, which was against Gordon Ryan. We're going to keep the top position. Jacob Couch has no problem just pouring the pressure on here, making things miserable because he's felt that very same sensation himself. Good. Keep that top position, Jacob. Good pressure, good pressure. Okay, we're halfway through the match, Jacob. 50%, 50%. No space, Jacob, no space. Good, stay focused, stay focused here. Hey, it has to be perfect. It has to be perfect. Hey, we're under six minutes here, Jacob. You look incredible. Hey, completely domination here. You just stay focused, stay focused. The submission's on the way. Has to be perfect, has to be perfect. And what a redemption arc for Jacob Couch, right? His last WNO appearance did not go his way. He came back and is really looking incredible right now. Heavy pressure staying on top. The submission's coming. This is it. Focus. Focus. Under four minutes now. Good. Big deep breath. Focus. Focus. Complete tunnel vision for the next four minutes. Heavy pressure. Heavy pressure. Two minutes, 59 seconds left. Focus for the next three minutes. Okay, he's going to have to expose the submission now, Jacob. This is it, Jacob. Hey, this is what you've waited for. Make sure the pressure's there. Perfect positioning. Fifty-nine seconds to finish, Jacob. Fifty-nine seconds. Here it comes. Make sure it's perfect positioning. ADCC open, I'm, he'll I'm, win next. No, I'm gonna push now. I have a reserve for 88, uh, Porfirio. I'm They're gonna, gonna drop for, out. I'm gonna push for him to be the second one. My well, left arm's tired, bro. He was, he's it. disappointed in how you did. He's no, always telling me. This guy. Representing Pedico submission fighting the Hill Billy Hammer, Jacob. Yeah, absolutely dominant performance, really. Not much more you can say about a match as one-sided as that. So you would consider yourself a vet now. This is like number seven. <laughs> it's like, on? We'll, just, we'll go approximate range five to seven because I have like four matches at the tournament. So when I think about how many times I've been on the who's number one, I'm like, it kind of scrambles around, um, but Every time feels like the first time to me, you know, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. I wish, uh, <clears throat> I wish uh, Mamaw could have came to one before she passed away, but she's here. Before, uh, before she passed away, <clears throat> I got to go see her in the hospital, and it was the first time, uh, it was the first time she had ever said anything like this. She goes, you, you found your calling, and uh, 
that meant a lot. So I'm just so I'm just so happy to be here, and I feel like I I'm in a I'm in the best place mentally I've ever been, physically I've ever been, and I just I'm ready to be the best me I can, be the best friend I can, be the best competitor I can, just try to be the best person I can. Obviously with a little motivation from Memo, but uh, yeah, just trying to make everything come full circle and not waste her spirit, you know. I'm just more than anything. If you guys see me there, I, I was looking up in the rafters after I got my hand raised. I was looking at her in a figurative way because I know if she got to see this, she would be smiling. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to carry on her spirit and keep smiling. At the West Coast Trials, I was a little misaligned with my purpose in life, and there were some personal things that happened, obviously, that realigned me. Pain can be the best teacher if you let it. I just kind of took that with me and carried the sorrow and the triumph out here on the mat. The guy that actually got me into martial arts, his dad, I was on the phone with him when I was in high school and I was crying. And I was like, I don't want to be on food stamps no more. I don't want my income to be based strictly off government checks, you know? And he goes, Jacob, listen to me. It's not about where you're at, it's about where you're going. And I think this is a prime case example of that. It's hot enough that I can shower outside and there's less people so I can get naked, nobody even notice. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, so you use dish soap? Yeah, it's really, it's good for antibacterial. It's good. I mean, if it cleans your dishes, why can't it clean your body? I think it's funny seeing you guys leave. It looks weird, right? Yeah, it kind of sucks that we have to leave. <laughs> it's comfortable to be in like a nice bed, but it's it's much nicer just being here. I like miss living in the car. It's weird to not live in the car. They kicked us out, and the longer we stayed, the longer everybody else stayed. So it was something that had to happen, unfortunately. What's up everybody, welcome to sunny Las Vegas, Nevada. The most historic, the biggest, the baddest, the best jiu-jitsu tournament of all time is about to go down. The ADCC World Championship, it does not get any bigger than this. We are in Las Vegas, Nevada at the ADCC Open. This is a tournament that takes place a day prior to the ADCC big, big tournament. It's a very, very good feeling to know that all the best guys in the world will be competing on the same match. This is the stage I want to be on one day. This is like what everybody's goal is to be, is to be here, so it's kind of cool to be on the same match as the big show. Being able to be a part of this and finally trying to make a mark for myself in this rule set, it's a special feeling and I can't wait. There's a lot of amazing, amazing people here. We got a big crew, we got CJ Murdoch, Alejandro, George, Pixley, the one guy, oh, Jacob Couch. Hey, CJ, hey, let's go, let's go. Coach in the entire world, 34 years old. Let's go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, welcome to the super shed. As you can see, the casa, our house, um, Kate's altar, weird witchy shit. This is uh, the Indianapolis uh, Open uh, tarp. 
Yeah, so this is a, so we don't get our feet all dirty from the garage. Do you like it being over here, having your own space a little bit, that type of thing? Um, yeah, it's kind of nice. Like it was, it was just nice to just be at the gym so I didn't have to like time when I had to leave and stuff. It was just a little bit easier organizing that, but I guess it's like real people shit, so people deal with that shit all the time. I get to be in the basement, so essentially I feel like it is like three to four Ford Focuses worth of space. So it's, it's nice. I get to actually like lay in like a real bed, so I really shouldn't complain that I'm not in a car anymore. Having a real shower with like real hot water, that's the most luxurious thing I think luxury. that I can think of. Just having like an accessible toilet 24-7 is a luxury or a kitchen. So I do miss just going out onto the mat and living at the gym in that way, but you know, it's a give and take, so. I told him it wasn't an upgrade or a downgrade, it was just like a move over. Yeah, yeah. It's nice to stretch our legs a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> So there's no future plans of like, okay, one day we're gonna have a whole house to ourselves. I think um, maybe maybe a tiny a house bi a big, to a gym. Maybe a, sh a big shed somewhere. Yeah, like one he, big he one really big wants room. To stay as shed people. <laughs> yeah, the less space, the better. I think less to clean up and less to worry about and less to pay for. I can't imagine my life not being in Mount Vernon at this point. I feel like it's like a hyperbolic time chamber and I just get to like train at super speed. It's literally like a competition every single round now. Good shit. Hey, had a boy. Had a boy. The first day I met Heath, it was like literally like the nicest guy to me. Like he detailed techniques for me for like an hour and a half. I basically gave Josh and I a private. Like when he's got, I'm sure he had plenty of things to do that day and he didn't even know us. So he treated us like literally like family from the moment I got there. And that was like the only, like one of the only times I've ever felt like that. that. That's what really attracted me to Heath. Like it really reminded me of Brazil and it really reminded me of like having that connection. Like we all have our faults, but everybody tries extra hard because we know that the only thing that we can give back to Heath is like trying hard and being our best. And he doesn't want us to just be like, our best at Jiu Jitsu. He wants us to be good people. He's always encouraging us to do good things. Let's go, man. Day two, right? Day two. Day two. You know, like growing up, I never thought that I would uh, end up at one of the schools that is the best in the world with Jiu Jitsu. It seemed like a dream that was really, really far away. And now it's like happening. And I don't know, it, it seems like it was meant to happen. Like, I can't imagine being anywhere other than with Heath. It's just, I don't know, I just feel, feel like we fit here. Uh, you just have to say the wackest shit you can, Rosa. Talk about uh, the, pot, the pots of gold. Pots of gold? Yeah, yeah. I uh, guess. I was called a bad leprechaun yesterday in training. <laughs> She's not my friend. Her name's Rosa. She happened to show up at the gym. Um, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know. I don't know when. Hopefully, we can make her into a grappler. Outside of jiu-jitsu, God knows. Um, but yeah, Rosa lost brown belt PSF. Soon to be, still brown belt. She never promoted a black belt. A perpetual brown belt. My name is Rosa Walsh. I'm from Ireland. I have been training for nearly eight years and I competed on Grapple Fest in Liverpool last February where I met Heath and a lot of the guys from here and then they invited me over and it kind of snowballed from there. First time we rolled was at Grapple Fest and you tried to throw me on my skull as hard as you can. And, and you I tried to reverse guillotine me. Oh yeah, yeah, the decapitator. I think I did. You did? Yeah. No, you didn't. I think I did. But this is the thing, what was people thought was really weird. Like, I didn't know who any of them were. I only watched the show like the, when I came here at the start. First time rolled a pick stain, I shot on him. I was like... <laughs> Way to go. And then I got kneed in the head then, which was fantastic. You didn't see the documentary at all. Like, what was your first impression of these guys? I think we were like warming up by running. I think he just like slapped me in the face or something. And everybody was like... No, I don't think I did that. I think you punched me or you, you went like... I don't that know or what something. I, did. I think it was like my second time here, and then I was just like, oh, and everyone else was like, especially him. It's like they're very like the Irish, you know. So it's very kind of like like just no fucks given, crazy like 
full of personality. I think that's one of the reasons why I liked here so much is because like I've trained in so many of the best gyms in the world and like it's the people that make it. It's the people that make people stay. I will tell you you're tougher than I thought you would be. I thought you'd be shit. <laughs> sure what's new? I used to surf a lot. But like, yeah, surfing is massive in Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's really popular. In the ocean. In the ocean, yeah. Not it's, a river. <laughs> I'm well aware. In the ocean, in the freezing cold. Leprechauns just sink because of the gold coins that you want. I got it. That's me. That's me. <laughs> you know, uh, she uh, she needs a lot of work. She needs a lot of work on. Uh, you know, we've been working on American accents. gave me the underhook. We've, just, we've been working on American accents. Oh, she cool. still thinks for some reason that she has a chance of ever submitting me, which is confusing. But it's, not, it's a work in progress. It's a work in progress. I will fuck him up one day. I think, yeah, I think I'm definitely in the gang now. I think they're amused by me. <laughs> like, what is this little weird Irish girl doing over here? <laughs> like, I left a full-time job. I, like, I'd been traveling and like do it, living the jiu-jitsu lifestyle for so long. And like, there's nobody really else who does it, like females. And like, they're all probably my best friends here and everything. But I do think they're like, what's she doing here? She's so weird. <laughs> She just fits right in, man. It's, it, it's, it's like she's been here for years, you know what I mean? She has a great relationship with the guys and the girls on the team. Her style fits in. She learns quickly. I mean, I, I can't say enough uh, good stuff about her when it comes to the magnetic puzzle fitting that kind of happened there. I'm Brennan. It's very similar to Maryland. Kind of small town. Everyone knows everyone. It's such a lovely community, like in and outside the gym, which is very like home and stuff. So it's very small, but it's, it's very me. <laughs> In Ireland, like the gym that I was training in, it was very similar. It was like hard rounds. It was like, it doesn't matter if like you're white to black. This is one of the only gyms in the US where I felt it was similar, if not better. I love the, like, the underdog mentality. It's like this tiny gym in Mount Vernon, in the middle of nowhere. No one expected them to do very well and they still kind of like broke through the glass ceiling and look what they've done now. She immediately fell into a dominant position as a female competitor on her team, you know what I mean? And she wants to make waves and win. And let me tell you, man, she's tough. Another thing why I really liked about here is that like, I'm treated as an athlete, not as a female, if that makes sense. Like guys look at me and just kind of like play role or like play dead and stuff with girls and it just drives me insane. But then here, it's like, you're going hell for leather, you're going to the death basically in every round, regardless of gender or belt level, and I love it. I had prioritized everything outside of myself for so long. Like, I graduated high school with perfect marks. I went to my four-year college degree, perfect marks. I worked for two years as a high school teacher. Like, I did everything as it was supposed to, according to the status quo. But like, I've literally, and I'll say it proudly, the first time in years that I felt like pure joy has been when I made the decision to stay. It's mind blowing because I never thought, like it's so cheesy, but like, I never thought that I'd be able to, to do this full time. It's like, a, it's like a dream and then it's like it actually is coming true now. So it's pretty cheesy, but it's true. <laughs> I'm a very insecure person in a lot of ways. So I think it's like perseverance and confidence are two of the biggest things that I've learned from being here. Rosa Walsh, she won. She also had a huge win over a top-ranked all-time women's black belt. 
being here, it's like they want the best for you and you can kind of like feel it. There's no ulterior motive. I've been welcomed from, from everyone so well. Like that has been the massive thing. It's just the sense of community and like that I'm living my dream. That's been just the pure joy. To enjoy the shit. So come on, enjoy it. Huh? You know, I'm not gonna sit here and laugh and smile when I'm sitting on my own on the No, I know. This is why I'm doing it. <laughs> this is exactly why I'm doing it. You're sitting down like a fucking. <laughs> Aren't you up? <laughs> Never mind, I can't say that. Okay, I'm kidding. Don't say that. Aren't you up? Like a kangaroo. I'm um, being nervous probably because I'm filming with my fucking hands. I usually get nervous, but I'm alright. I don't know. I feel alright. Who's telling me to have fun? You know, which is the whole point we come out here. That's the whole goal. You know what I mean? Everyone fucking it's like you come in here and you're so nervous to have that match and you struggle to enjoy everything else. But I've been a lot better with it. You know, shit takes time, but that's what the belts are for. But I don't know. This is fucking sick. I don't know where else you get the opportunity to compete at the ADCCs basically a couple days out. You get the same venue. Same vibe, everyone's fucking wanting to win the same. That's it, that's it, I like it. Turn the knee and knee and knee and that's it, keep it, keep it. You can finish with that, finish that. You can finish it. Hey, that was a good attempt. That was good. Good. That's it. Just keep climbing, keep climbing. Hey, he'll get hit for stalling. You just keep going for submissions. Keep going. You're out. Nice. Hey, good. Hey, that's good. Chill out, bro. It's all right. Fuck. I thought my foot was under his hamstring. Well, it wasn't, and that's okay. Because we got next time to look forward. It's okay. What you do this shit for? If you, hey, if you were always perfect, there'd be no point in this shit. You know what I'm saying? Don't be too hard on I could see that Spatch was getting anxious. He looked good. Unfortunately, he lost, but he still looked good. And, you know, I'm proud of him either way, win or lose. He's my, one of my best friends. I love him to death, so. It's always been something for me that I fucking struggled with, being able to translate, smashing in the room to being able to go out there and do the same thing. You know, only getting five minutes and getting a few opportunities to make the right decisions is tough. So I feel like when I'm going out there and I talk to Ethan about it, every single time I get closer and closer to being able to win. Came all the way from the Yukon, right by Alaska. I swear to God. Yeah. Yeah. I messaged you trying to get a white shirt, but we didn't have any. So. Fuck. But that's all right. I was gonna. No, this works. It means a ton, for real. Yeah, I appreciate your support so much, man. Absolutely. You guys need to come. Uh, you guys need to come and uh, train. Oh, I'd love. To. Here, here's my phone number. If you ever want to come visit, like stay, come train at the gym, just let me know. Look in the middle, guys. One guy shoots, the other guy defends, then the other guy's gonna reshoot immediately. He defends right into the shot, all right? One more time, back up. One guy shoots, you defend right to it. I don't care how you finish it, shot, reshot. Be quick, try and score off your opponent's offense, all right? So we are here at Mount Vernon Township High School. I'm the head wrestling coach here. My assistant coaches are Tag Cravens and Michael Pixley. We train these kids every day. This is our first year running the program. We kind of just run it just like we would at Daisy Fresh, except we gotta keep it PG because we're in the high school, so. Pixley stands alone when it comes to wrestlers. He's the best human I've ever put hands on on a wrestling mat. You know, and having someone that high level in your high school room is huge. So between him and Tad and myself, and all the other high school and college ex-wrestlers on Daisy Fresh that visit, these kids have a, f a full coaching staff of like elite guys that can they can get out of. So 
It's important that you block the armpit and the elbow so that your legs don't get caught. The program was kind of on its way out, unfortunately. Like 25 years ago, the program was really good, but the past 25 years have been pretty bad. She was watching. We've got a winning record. It's the first time the team's had a winning record in over two decades, so I'm already uh, changing it. Last year they had five kids on the team. This year we have a full lineup, plus JV, plus a bunch of freshmen, plus girls. So two girls on the team, we're trying to build it so we can get a full women's team, but we're working our way up there. Getting people on the team was like my number one priority. Like my first goal when I got here was not having six kids on the team. They had six kids on the team last year. So I would come in during their lunch hours and I would just literally bombard these kids table by table, bothering all of them, talking to all of them, hanging out with them, and just trying to get them to come in and check it out and see what it's about. If I can bother 100 kids each day and one kid a day joins the team, it was worth it for me. I'm Jared Schaefer and I ended up coming down here purely for jiu-jitsu at like 16. And when Alejandro got the wrestling program, I switched my online credits to Mount Vernon to wrestle with Al, Pixley, and Tad coaching me. Over about four months, they got me to the state series and I took third and the only person I lost to in the state series was the state champ. And I ended up having my season with a 40 and four record. For me, I know the expectation in this room is you're gonna go in there and you're gonna try to die every day. In the high school wrestling room, it was kind of the same. We just go really hard and it's, it's no bad blood afterwards. They're getting better every day. They're getting better at a very quick pace. We're very lucky we got a bunch of really good coaches that are dedicated to the kids and they give them 100%. So the kids are trying to give back as best they can and everyone's working hard. Everyone's putting in the time and the kids are starting to drink the Kool-Aid and believe in the, in the process. So it's working out. Circle up. I miss the ADCC East and West Coast Trials. I tore my ACL and meniscus literally one week before. We were gonna do the East Coast Trials. And this is my first time competing under the ADCC banner. And I'm so ready, I'm so excited, and I seriously can't wait. I've thrown myself head over heels into coaching, and it has made my jujitsu even better. It has made my wrestling even better. I feel like I'm the best version of myself right at this moment. And I'm just excited to go out there and put on a show. And I think if I just do that, everything else will follow. Send him, send him. Oh. I feel really good. It feels good to be back. It's a long road for myself, and I've been out for about a year on and off with injury after injury, so it feels good to feel 100%. I just feel like I'm in my element. I feel good. And I couldn't be happier right now, honestly. Well, that is just what you taught me. Hey, that's it, bro. Nice. Stop letting him grab your wrist. Stop letting him grab it. Nice. Finish him, finish him, finish him. Atta boy. That's it. Hey, you're going to be up again quick, bro. That guillotine you had me in was tight, tight. Yeah, he, was was on on the he was waiting on it, bro. It was fucked up, man. It was fucked up pretty good. <laughs> fucked up pretty good. I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. I'm a little worn from that one. Yeah, that, that guy made me pull out everything I had. Nice. 
Alejandro, he performed so well at the ADCC Open. I was so excited for him. He didn't come out with the result he wanted, but I couldn't be prouder of him, honestly. I had an awesome run today. A bunch of crazy, exciting matches. I ended up winning four matches straight. Hey! The confidence that I have now, after doing this, you know, I beat some really tough guys, you know, and I know I can hang. I just gotta get back in the gym and keep pushing myself, pushing myself on the mats, pushing myself as a coach. I just know it's gonna pay off. I know I'm right there. I know I'm on the cusp. I know a lot of our guys are on the cusp of something great, and uh, I'm hyped. You're keeping your hands behind the armpits, following his hips, cupping behind his armpits, cupping behind his stomach, and you're just following behind him. The guys are getting away from you too easily, all right? So I need you guys getting used to following their hips. That way they are not getting away and scoring one, or worse, reversing us, all right? You know, I just wanted to help Mount Vernon. Mount Vernon's done a lot for me and for Heath. Building the wrestling program here will further build the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in Mount Vernon. They know about what we're doing and they know about Pedego because it's been in Mount Vernon, you know, since they've been alive. So all these kids want to join. All these kids want to start doing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And you know, when they get done doing this, they're going to be the next crop of Daisy Fresh. You got to tell me when you're hurt, bro. You can't just run off. I don't know where you are. Go see the AT. I'm hard on them when they're wrestling them, you know. I'm, I'm helping them understand what hard work is, is. You know, a lot of these kids have never really worked hard before in their life. Not a lot have ever pushed themselves to the limit physically or mentally. So um, it's interesting to, to get them there. Yeah, just hand Heath's process that he, he's put us through and taught us is, is legit. He's uh, taught me a lot in being a human and being a good coach. And, uh, it's really fun to be able to implement everything I've learned from him and just from being a Daisy Fresh and doing it here on my own without him. This is the first time I've ever really done anything on my own. Some of these kids come from a rough background and this has given them hope for a life outside of high school. You know what I mean? So it's pretty special. I had kids that were struggling with suicidal tendencies and they just weren't happy with their lives and this is giving them hope. You know, this is giving them something to motivate themselves to wake up every day and come to school and get the good grades and come running to practice, you know? So it's just good to see kids happy, man. There's a lot of unhappy kids out there in this world, man. There's a lot of unhappy kids. Being a teenager ain't easy. You gotta be there for these kids in their lives, mentally and emotionally, just as much as you are there with them on the mat. I think some of these kids could quit right now and never wrestle ever again, and I think I would have helped them in their life. The amount of talent in Mount Vernon is ridiculous, and the amount of talent in Mount Vernon that's not being put to use is ridiculous. So I'm just trying to build up the community and give a lot of these kids a purpose at a young age. Picks leads up over there, warming up. Look how big he is. He looks like a basketball player. We'll cut, turn him over. Holla. He's hooked, dude. I'm about to light him up. Good, just body lock, body lock. Hey, you know you can pass whenever you want, so as soon as it's points. Go. Nice. Stick it, stick it, stick it, stick it. All right, make this one count. Take your time, take your time. That a boy. Good shit. Good job. 60 seconds till point, Pixley. Keep circling. That's the way he's going to get at every single time. Cover the hips and keep circling, buddy. Cover the hips and keep circling. Good job. Good. Breathe, 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 Michael. Breathe. Keep moving. Good, buddy. Kimura, Kimura. Drive on your leg. Drive on your leg. Same thing. Snap him down. Make him work out of Hey, let's finish. Yes. So round one, I had like a really, really strong, bigger guy. I beat him 3-0, got the pass. Second match, the guy was tough, he kept slipping my darts. Finally got the darts locked up and got the sub. 
into the semis. Next match is a really, really tough match. The guy just defeated Casio from John G. Ribeiro's. Very, very, very good guy. All right, I'm gonna win this whole thing. Two more. Listen, if Couch can't leg lock you in class, how the fuck are these guys gonna leg lock you? Yeah. Hey, make it count, make it count. It's tight, it's tight. Stay on top. All right, set it up, set it up. Keep it. Let's finish it. We're finishing this. It's tight, that's it. Match number three, tough black belt from New Zealand. Darts him in 25 seconds. The last match, the guy was really super strong. Stay focused. It's heavy on his head, heavy on his head. Wear him down the next 50 seconds. Good, good, Michael. Focus, focus. Hey, you're doing great, Dixon. You're doing great. Keep it up. Smart here, Michael. Smart, smart. That a boy, that a boy. Nice, that's it. That boy, good stuff. Suck it up, let's go. Nice. Send him, send him. Hooks, hooks, both hooks. Both hooks. You gotta stay on top. He's high, you're out. Good, Michael, good. That a boy. Send him, send him, send him. That's gonna be a takedown, baby. Hold it. Stick him, stick him, stick him. Last match, the guy was super tough. Kind of similar body type, decent wrestler. Went down to like the last two minutes, I think, and then I locked up the three-quarter to the darts and then got the sub to win the whole thing. Good shit. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, that's it, I fucking told you. I fucking told you that shit was yours. You're fucking crazy. You're crazy. Fix it, great, bro. It's great. Michael Pixley had an amazing division, came, dominated. I believe he had all submissions but one. Pixley ended up coming out with gold and submitting a, a few really good black belts, and he's still just a blue belt, so it's like, you know, the sky's the limit. It's exciting to see, and I'm excited for him. It's kind of cool to be on the same match as the big show. It's really giving me motivation to, to get to that next spot on the next two years. I've only been grappling for like a little bit over a year, so I didn't really know what to expect the first go around. And I think that next time I'm going to be a lot more prepared mentally and physically, and my jujitsu is going to be way better. So I think I'll end up qualifying to the ADCC and putting on a good showing. That's my goal. Before I moved to Pedigo, my life really wasn't, I was kind of lost, I guess. I had won the NCAA D2 Wrestling Nationals, and then after that, I really just kind of shitbagged it. I was just being like super, super not good with life. I was partying and not doing things so right, and then when I found Pedigo, my whole life changed around. You know, now I'm traveling the world. We're going to Africa next week, and Liverpool, and like, I, I just feel like, uh, I feel like God just blessed me with the team. You know, they, they saved my life. Everything happens for a reason, and I'm with the best team in the world. I got my brothers by my side. I got the OG Heath Pedigo giving me advice all the time. So I'm in good hands, and I'm, I couldn't be happier.
Uh, I leg locked him really fast. 22 seconds, I think. If I feel as good as I look, I'm in pretty bad shape. But I don't, thank God. I feel a little bit better than that. He's had two matches. I think he's been in for about a minute. So he's really dialed in, really focused. Hey, that's my move. That's my move, cuz. He said there's some tough guys in this, you know? It's just because someone didn't make the ADCC doesn't mean they're not raw, you know what I mean? So, it's a, yeah, it's, it's looking good. That's it, reach back, that's it. It's a cross. That's it. This is it. It's out. One kick, one kick, lift kick, lift kick. Hey, it's tight. It's going to be very tight. That's it. That's it, Cash. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Hey! Couch was the, the star for us of the tournament. He submitted everyone in his division. Gabriel Meda, who's a top 10 black belt. Thanks, man. I had five matches, five submissions. My longest match was like two minutes. Dog, I don't bring no suitcase. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> Look hey. at that. Look. Hey. That's crazy. Look at that, Heath. That's fine. You did all right. Yeah. You did all right. How did we do that? Amazing, man. Hey, we showed up. Awesome. We just showed up. As a whole, the team did really amazing. Uh, everybody showed out. I'm really proud, you know, of the team for just stepping up and, you know, getting it in in such a big venue with a lot, a lot of eyes on them. It was crazy. They were calling out B team second place, and George was like, "Who, who could be the first place winner?" And they said, "Petty goes submission fighting, first place." And we were like, "What the fuck?" And then we went up to the podium, and then they gave us this giant plastic thing that somehow we meant to get it on the plane, maybe disassemble it, but. I don't know, it's the biggest Las Vegas Open that ever happened, and I feel like this was one of the biggest jiu-jitsu weeks in history. Let's go! That was my favorite part, and just watch everyone kill it and contribute to that trophy for Heath. That was my favorite part of the weekend by far. Winning the Open, uh, uh, it's, it's a big one. It's just, you know, constantly climbing these ranks until, you know, we, we have enough to win the ADCC and the, and the, and the no Gi Worlds and the, then the, the Gi Pans and the Gi Worlds. And it's just constantly giving us goals to, to go out and reach. But this is definitely one that we can, you know, mark off the bucket list that I'm really, really proud of. Selling you stuff is really important. You gotta tell me shit. And people think I'm smart. Not to hurt Jacob, not to hurt Jacob. How did you get into Jiu Jitsu in the first place? It's so embarrassing. I, I did it to get a boy's attention when I was like 17, and then he quit. It's his wife and his cat. He passed away. The cat passed away. He got hit by a car. No. So did my brother. Well, I wrestled at the high school, and you know. I'm second string to Carl Schneider. No, no, no. That's what they do. That's what, that's what they do in high school. I, I don't have a gun. Overweight. You're out. Your season's ruined. You blew it, kid. There's no fakeness. It's like, it's just so real. It's so authentic. And that's I just, Jacob Catch. Yeah, besides, besides him. 
small. He doesn't even train anymore. I know. Time. Yeah, I think so. I don't know what to deal with him. Is I don't even. It's hard to even remember his face these days. <laughs> I don't even see him that much. Hand fighting with key. That's it, Murdoch. What? That's it. It's over. Oh bullshit. It's over. He's a hundred years old, folks. Hundred years old. It's 80 years of jiu-jitsu, plus 20 years of wrestling, plus one big joint before practice. If you want to stay here, you can marry Rondo. Do I have to? I'm sure there's other better prospects. No, I'm sure there's better prospects. He's funny, handsome, nice belly, very belly. He said if I can clean up after his dogs, he'll marry me. This is what we've all been waiting for, for the ADCC World Championships. This is like college basketball, NBA type level event. Mika Galpao, he's gonna be taking on Dante Leone. This is a rematch from Blues number one. I think this is the toughest match for Dante. You are the absolute best you've ever been in your entire life. Thanks. Let's fucking take it to his ass. It's your time. 